welcome 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 my goal is to help you hit your goal as a married person who loves the lord so as a man who loves god if you are at this point asking god to help you so maybe in your marriage you have had a difficult year or a difficult couple of years you are disconnected from your wife you are struggling uh, to communicate without disputes, without um, it the becoming an argument, and you are wondering how can we continue like this? You want God to do something about it, and uh, you have been praying, but maybe you didn't get any result. I want to join with you to pray, but beyond that, I want to show you how you can pray even more effectively i'm going to start with mark's gospel chapter 11 from verse 12 to 14 and then 20 to 26 why am i sharing this i want to share this so that your confidence in god can be in the right space if you want to be successful in anything as a believer if you want to be successful in anything as a child of god there are three things that must be in place. Number one, your confidence in God. Because as a believer, you have God in you, you are a child of God, all of this has to be in place. And then number two is your strategy. Whatever God gives you to do, the strategy that God wants you to use. And number three is your consistency. And in this, in the case of marriage, this is also very applicable. So confidence in God, is what we're going to look at if you are going to get a miracle you have to be confident that god will give you that miracle and that god is able so mark's gospel chapter 11 mark's gospel chapter 11 verse 12 it says now the next day when they had come out from bethany he was hungry that's jesus and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it when he came to it he found nothing but leaves for it was not the season for fruit for figs in response jesus said to it said to it let no one eat fruit from you ever again and his disciples heard it and so that's the first portion of the story a lot of things happens in between then in verse 20 it says now in the morning that's Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 20. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. So within 24 hours, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Verse 21. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. This is what we're talking about right now. Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So this is a very important way or, or instruction that jesus leaves for the disciples and for us and so he gives them an expans ex expanded version of that verse 24 therefore i say to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them verse 25 and whatever you stand praying if you have anything against anyone forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses but if you do not forgive neither will your father in heaven forgive your trespasses so here the reason why i'm sharing this with you is because i want you to know that confidence in god or faith in god is what brings about the miraculous this is the key there so when jesus walking on on the streets from bethany going uh, to, the, to the temple he went to a tree that had no fig 
no fruit on it. And he said to the, to the tree, he spoke to the tree. He didn't pray, he even just spoke to the tree. He said, tree, you're not, nobody's going to eat out of you anymore. And the apostles must have heard that and wondered, why is he so angry at the tree? Uh, but what Jesus wanted to do was train them to understand this fundamental truth. And it's everywhere in the New Testament. It says, he was saying that to them, have faith in God. So as a believer, it is important that we understand and have confidence in the fact that we serve a very powerful God. But not just that he is powerful, we also need to remember that he loves us. Not only that he loves us, he has a plan for us. And not only that he has a plan for us, he is willing to join with us to do his plan. And so before we pray, it is important to understand the, this truth, all right? So number f the, the first thing I want to uh, really speak to you right now is, or ask you so that you can get it, is do you believe that God is able to transform your marriage? And many times I sit with people in, in, in helping them with their marriage or with any other situation in life is the same. I always like to ask that question. Do you believe that God is able to do this thing that you're looking for. And if you do, then I ask, what do, you, what do you believe for? Are you believing God to restore your marriage? So I know that when I asked that question, I've gotten different kinds of responses. I'll just share a few of them with you. Um, it may be, I want my wife to come back home. That's, that's a prayer, that's, that's a desire. It is possible. Do you believe that God can do that? You, If you answer yes, then great. If your answer is no, that's also okay because you need to build up your faith. Faith comes by more and more information. And, and scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The more you understand what God is doing, the more you are able to pray, the more you are able to trust God and receive what God wants for you. So if your 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 desire is, no, oh, I want my wife back home, or I want my husband back home if you're a woman, or uh, I want my wife and I to have a deeper connection. If that's your prayer, that's what you're going to trust God for. And the question is, is God able to do that? If you have confidence in God, that God loves you, then you need to have that confidence also that he wants what's best for you. He wants what is best for you and for his plans for you. Important to know. And, and look at the apostles here. They were going with Jesus. Jesus spoke to the tree. When they saw the tree the next day, they noticed that God's word has come to pass. Jesus' uh, commandment or, or statement has become real. And he used that opportunity to teach them. And what he taught them is important. What he taught them is that whenever you pray about something, believe that you receive that. So faith is very crucial if you're going to receive anything. But there's one more thing. Unforgiveness can block your faith. And unforgiveness, and you wonder why, I, I always wonder, why did Jesus throw this in? It looks like it's out of place. It's not out of place. It's, it's there because one big thing that can make it difficult for you to trust God is when you decide that you are better than him, you're wiser than him. And unforgiveness is a proof, it's a, it's a way to say to yourself, um, I know that God loves me, God knows me, but I have a better judgment on what this person has done, and I cannot trust God with this person. So, Unforgiveness is a, is a proof to you that your faith level is low. And that's why those two go together. Have faith in God and forgive. So as you pray for your marriage, and I know that you're praying for the health of the marriage, but go beyond. Pray for everything that God wants for you. And as you pray, let it start from the fact that God is able and is willing to do whatever it needs to be done for my marriage to be transformed. I have confidence that my father is able to do these things. Before I uh, wrap up, I want to mention that if you have 
not downloaded my friendship rebuilding cheat sheet friendship rebuilding cheat sheet it's a one page pdf that i have created to help you restore friendship in your marriage if you are if you've not done that then you want to download that by going to adisobanja.com slash friends adisobanja.com slash friends and you will have access to that pdf it comes with a training the pdf the cheat sheet is just to remind you of what i say in the training so you can put it in on your screen or somewhere in your home but you can take a look at it take a glance and you get an understanding of what you need to do so you can keep that consistency going All right so i'll be happy to send that to you for free and also if you want to join us for the masterclass on thursday um, go ahead to adisobanja.com slash masterclass is free and we're going to be looking at the strategy there the lord bless you increase you strengthen you and until we meet again continue to love like jesus and make mega impact bye for now